I'm Peggy Peck, MedPage Today, reporting from New Orleans at the American Heart Association Scientific Sessions. Exercise, known to benefit the heart, but can it benefit the failing heart? We hear here the results of HF action. So we designed a trial uh, over seven years ago uh, to test the hypothesis whether exercise training in a randomized controlled fashion could reduce the primary endpoint of all-cause mortality and hospitalization uh, by 20 percent over a two-year period. This was our primary endpoint. Our secondary endpoints were clinical endpoints of CV mortality and CV hospitalization, uh, CV mortality and heart failure hospitalization, mortality alone, safety, uh, physiologic endpoints uh, uh, that could be measured on the uh, cardiopulmonary exercise test or six-minute walk, uh, quality of life, and cost. The de design of the study is outlined on this slide. Uh, we asked patients who had chronic heart failure, class two through four symptoms, ejection fraction less than or equal 35%, who were on optimal medical therapy um, uh, and were capable of exercising, uh, who underwent a CPX study, an echo, uh, prior to randomization. And they were randomized in a one-to-one -one fashion, stratified by center in heart failure etiology, uh, to usual care exercise training and followed for two and a half years. In the usual care arm, they got optimal medical treatment patient education they got uh, equal surveillance with phone calls, uh, and the recommended guidelines at that time suggested moderate intensity activity 30 minutes a day. That recommendation was given once at the beginning of the trial. In the exercise training group, optimal medical therapy, patient education, phone calls, supervised training, which consisted of 36 sessions over a 12-week period uh, with a goal of 90 minutes per week, uh, attempting to achieve a uh, 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 seventy percent of the heart rate reserve and then a transition during that period uh, and after completion of that period to home-based exercise uh, in which the goal was forty minutes five times a week um, uh, that was a, a, a very high goal to uh, that we wanted them to attempt at sixty to seventy percent of uh, heart rate reserve and they were followed for two and a half years the results of the primary endpoint are shown on this slide. Uh, the um, time to all-cause mortality or all-cause hospitalization. The, as you can see here, there was a 7% reduction in the primary endpoint uh, that did not achieve statistical significance. Uh, and this was um, adjusted for heart failure etiology. And this was the primary endpoint. However, we had uh, pre-specified uh, in the protocol that we would do an adjusted analysis. And this adjusted analysis was done on the five uh, uh, key prognostic variables uh, related to outcome, but we didn't look at uh, the outcome when we determined these, uh, um, uh, these prognostic factors. Uh, and as you can see here on the top line, uh, the Again, the primary endpoint of all-cause mortality and hospitalization. Um, the main analysis, there was a 7% non-statistically significant reduction. But in the adjusted analysis, there was an 11% reduction uh, in the primary endpoint that achieved statistical significance. With respect to cardiovascular mortality and cardiovascular hospitalization, both the main analysis and adjusted analysis achieved an 8 to 9% reduction that was not statistically significant. And with respect to the cardiovascular mortality and heart failure hospitalization secondary endpoint, uh, in the main analysis, there was a 13% reduction uh, that was not statistically significant at a p-value of 0 0.06. But again, adjustment for the key five prognostic variables uh, that we pre-specified this analysis in the protocol there was a 15% reduction in this composite endpoint, the p-value of 0 0.03. The exercise benefit, though modest, came on top of optimal treatment. Uh, yes, the compliance rate was excellent in the HF Action trial. We saw that patients came into the trial 
on over 90% use of ACE inhibitors or ARVs, 95% beta blockers, 43% aldosterone antagonists, and 40% ICD at baseline. So this was a very well medicated and treated heart failure group. Mm -hmm. Moreover, that modest benefit may translate into a guideline change as we hear here. Dr. Jessup, um, I'm interested on, in uh, your, your take on the, uh, on the findings reported from HF Action today, um, specifically in terms of the possibility of a guideline change since you do chair the ACC AHA Heart Failure Guidelines Committee. Yes, well I think what's important to know is, is that the guidelines currently recommend exercise for the vast majority of heart failure patients, but it was a level of evidence C. We didn't have a lot of data. And heart failure action it not only shows that hospitalizations were decreased, but mortality was decreased. That's a powerful message for clinicians. It's a powerful message for patients. And we hope that it'll be a message to those, those uh, third party payers that currently do not fund cardiac rehab for heart failure. We don't fund after heart transplant, and so that if this is the kind of data that will motivate payers to pay for formal exercise programs, I think it'll be uh, wonderful. To sum up, exercise did show a mortality and hospitalization benefit in this population of patients with heart failure. In New Orleans, at the American Heart Association, I'm Peggy Peck, MedPage Today.